Chief Justice, what do you feel are some of the most important attributes of character and fitness that an uh, aspiring lawyer can strive for? <laughs> well, oh, that's such a wonderful question, and I'm sure books have been written about it. But I, I, I think uh, an ethic of service, I would put right at the beginning. Um, when you become a lawyer, you're given uh, great privileges to practice, but it's really, it's not a license to make money, it's a license to serve. It's a license to serve the people. That's why you're given your privileges. And so uh, I believe that that is what should, should motivate every lawyer all the time, uh, the ethic of honest service. Of course you're going to be honest, of course you're, you're going to comply with the rules of the bar, uh, you're going to do all of those things. I take that for granted. You're going to work hard to do your best for your client in whatever case. But, but it is that ethic of service and that, re that, that sometimes, occasionally, gets forgotten as you're rushing about doing all the other things you're doing. And you know, that's what actually gives you the satisfaction at the end of the day. When, when you talk to lawyers who have been, had happy professional careers, what they, they don't talk about how much money they made in a particular year, although they probably did all right. Uh, but what, what they remember is how they were able to help people or how they were able to do something that was good for society. And that's what stands out. That's what you'll be asking yourself at the end of your career. So I'd say keep thinking about that. Thank you. I'm curious as to what your either most difficult or most memorable case that you've adjudicated as <laughs> I'm always asked that and I, I never can answer it because you know, uh, there are a lot of difficult cases and you remember, it's like having a very large family, you remember different ones for different reasons. And, uh, Do you have one that's like particularly emotional, that kind of affected you emotionally perhaps? Uh, well, I, I, I can't say that. I mean, one tries not to get overly emotionally affected by it. But part of being a judge is being able to, at least intellectually, dis distance yourself somehow. And, and if a judge is starting to get emotional about, I have to win this point, or I have to drive this home, or I have to establish that agenda, I think that is something you should watch for and, and, and not, and be very careful about. So the whole business of judging is standing back, listening to what each party has to say, and conscientiously trying to make the right decision. So, no, when I think of memorable cases, I mean, I, you can think of some that, um, uh, that really have important uh, constitutional impact. For example, we had a reference on the secession of Quebec uh, a few, a 10, years ago, but there was, a, there was a referendum in Quebec that very nearly ended in a vote uh, for something called Sovereignty Association, uh, which people aren't too sure what it is. It wasn't outright separation, but something less, but still a political kind of division. And, uh, and uh, so the federal government put a reference to the Supreme Court and asked whether a province could unilaterally secede from the country. Well, that's a huge question. Our Constitution didn't say anything express about it. So uh, we had to get together as nine judges. It's also a politically laden question, and we try to, as I mentioned in the same-sex reference, avoid getting embroiled in, in you know, political, because we think that's for Parliament. So it was a delicate task, and I think it's one where the court acquitted itself very, very well. Um, we ultimately said that um, uh, if a province, uh, on, if a province's people on a clear question by a clear majority decided that they wanted to secede, uh, then uh, the federal government would be obliged to sit down and have negotiations. And we, we talked about four principles, principle of democracy, principle of respect for minorities, uh, principle of equality, and uh, the fourth one doesn't of federalism, and that these principles would imbue any, they, they almost are uh, 
the groundwork upon which the Constitution is set, if you wish. And therefore, while the Constitution itself doesn't say much about secession, you have to look at those principles in resolving it. So again, we kind of threw it back. We said, yes, it could be possible that at least you'd have to have discussions. Uh, we have a tradition in our country where we don't fight about these things. We wouldn't kill each other over it. We have negotiated discussions about it. And we would try to work it out peaceably. Well, that seemed to please everybody. Uh, or 